These two designs look exactly the same, but one of them stitched out much faster, and today I'm going to show you how to save embroidery time with this trick. If your designs keep stitching out wrong, it's not your fault. 90% of embroidery success comes down to how the design was made, and no one teaches that. That's why we created the free 101 course that shows you exactly what's happening under the needle. Click the link in the description to watch it for free and grab your bonus cheat sheet for better embroidery results. Now here's the design we're gonna be taking a look at, and it is a pretty simple design with all these little dots that are going around this circle. And each of these dots, you'll notice there's a little pair of scissors at each one, which is telling you that the machine is going to activate a trim. There's a trim command there. And you have to remember that when a machine embroiders, it has to tie in, and it usually ties in at a slower speed. It does the object. And if there's a trim command, the machine has to tie out, which it slows down. It has to trim the actual thread. It stops, it jumps over, and then it starts sewing the tie-in again at a slower speed, and then it ramps up to the speed. So you can lose up to 120 stitches of runtime on unnecessary trims in a design. And that turns into a big deal when you have a whole bunch of trims. I think there's like 35 or 36 separate little circles here. And by adding that, you know, 120 times 36 to the stitch count, this stitch count on this design is 4,380 stitches. That means that we have in reality, double the stitch count. What you see in your file isn't necessarily what you're gonna get when it sews out because the machine might have to you know, activate functions like color changes and trims. Now you also have to take into account that all of these little objects with all these tie-outs and tie-ins, that might visually affect these little circles as well. I mean, I did make sure when I created them, I sort of adjusted the push and pull. You can see that they're a little wider the direction of the stitch. It kind of looks like a sideways egg, but that's so that it stitches out like a circle and doesn't, uh, you know, because of the pull compensation, create an object that doesn't look circular. So what I need to do is I need to get rid of these trims. And obviously it would be easier to do in the process of digitizing. And yes, I did this design, you know, incorrectly on purpose, but I'm gonna show you now how you can go in and edit this so that you will make it more production friendly and show you some pretty cool tools in the EL software that makes the job even easier. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move up in the design a little bit just so I can see it and I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll just go to a three to one scale. And when I am here now, I'm gonna grab that first object. So I can see this is the first object in the sequence. And I'm going to grab the same thread color. So I'm gonna make sure that I grab the teal green and I'm going to select that first object and right click on it. And now I have a feature called digitize after. Now when I click digitize after and I hit my number one key on my keyboard, now I'm going to get a point here where I can come in and I can do a point from here right to here and then go over and I could zoom in a little more just so you can see it on screen. Let's just pan up here, but I'm going to put a connection here so that I'm going to drop into this object, hit enter, and now that has given me a run stitch connecting these two, but it's right in between. Then I just have to go to the next one, digitize after, hit that number one again, and then I'm just gonna do the exact same thing, and I'll continue on through my design and start creating all of these little objects here, one after the other, and all I have to do is make sure that I hit digitize after, hit the run, and then I'll continue to go through and just create a bunch of pathing you know, objects after each one so that I can go to the next one and keep going. So I can see that after every single object, it automatically you know, sort of inserts that travel stitch right where I need it. And then I just have to do the same thing, digitize after, hit that one, and I just continue on and create all of these. I'm dropping a stitch kind of right in between them so that stitch kind of disappears. And I just continue on my path. I can select the next object, which is gonna be right here. Again, just right click, digitize after, and then keep on going and put my points in like this into the next object. And I'll just very quickly do all these and then we will examine the design.
Now that we've inserted travel stitches between all those little dots, it's going to make this design much more efficient as it sews out. I'm just going to do a little redraw so that we can see how this is going to sew. And it's going to come in and do that little dot and then it's going to travel to the next one all the way around this design. So we have literally, you know, eliminated 35 unnecessary trims within this design. And then it's going to do the inside and then it'll come and do that border around the outside and the design will be done. So we know we're going to have, you know, a much faster runtime. The registration is going to be good and this design is going to sew out and look much better than it did before and run twice as fast. If you're excited to start creating your own designs, you'll love the Embroidery Legacy software. It's powerful, beginner friendly and built to make digitizing faster and easier than ever. And with our expert training, you won't be doing it alone. Click the link in the description to get started and take the next step in your embroidery journey.